Hey, Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja here with Brian Canfield of April Air, and we're going to answer one of the most asked questions on a search engine whenever you type in the word dehumidifier. What is the difference between a dehumidifier and a humidifier? Stay tuned. So if you're new to Crawl Space Ninja, we talk about everything related to crawl space encapsulation, basement waterproofing, and indoor air quality. We hope you'll subscribe to our channel, ring that notifications bell, and follow us on Facebook. Brian, I typed in the word dehumidifier on my search engine, and it said, what is the difference between a dehumidifier and a humidifier? And I just want everybody to know, April Air manufactures both. Correct. So we've done a few videos about ERV, HRV, humidifiers, dehumidifiers, things like that. So I'll put a link to some of those down below if you all want to watch them, but tell the viewers what's the difference and when would you need one versus the other. So a dehumidifier, which we've talked about many times, is removing moisture from the air. Basically, if you have hot, humid, moist air, a dehumidifier is pulling the water out. Now, at least where I come from in the Midwest, we have situations in the wintertime where it gets extremely dry. And in that case, you need a humidifier and a humidifier is actually adding water into the air so that it's comfortable when it's dry. Now you're adding water into the air versus if the dehumidifier, you're removing it out. Now ASHRAE recommends that a 50% relative humidity in an indoor environment is the optimal range. As you can imagine, in the summertime, we're using that dehumidifier to pull that water out to get to that set point. And in the wintertime, we're adding water in to get closer to that set point. Right, so you're saying 50% relative humidity year round. That's the optimal rating. Now, in a, in a winter environment, we try to shoot for around 30 to 35 percent, just because you know, as when the air gets cold, you can't hold as much water in there. That's right. So we, we do our best to try to get closer to 30 to 35 when, it, believe it or not, in the wintertime, a lot of home environments get all the way down to 10 to 15 percent, which is extremely uncomfortable. And that causes things like itchy skin sure. and cracks in hardwood floors. My, my oldest, whenever the humidity gets too low, he actually gets nosebleeds. So. That's right. Uh, respiratory infections, things like that. Even ozone levels are affected by low humidity. And uh, we wrote an article about uh, some of that, so we'll put a link to that down below. So let's, let's talk about that. The Midwest has a different problem than the Southeast. So the Southeast, we don't really, even our HVAC industry isn't really a proponent of installing a lot of humidifiers because our relative humidity is around 70% year round. But one of the things that is missing is that whenever you turn on your heat, no matter what relative humidity environment you're in, you're creating a different situation inside the home if you if you keep your heat higher. Yeah, that's right, Michael. Right? So, and also, I mean, we've talked numerous times about people using encapsulation or sealing up their crawl spaces. And anytime, whether it's crawl space encapsulation or sealing or using insulation, I mean, let's be real, houses are getting much more tighter as yeah. this construction progresses. And when you have those tight environments, you're creating an optimal environment for, as you mentioned, when you're heating for drying out. And so even in middle Tennessee or even in some of the areas in the southeast, you do get conditions where now you've sealed up a space that once had some more moisture coming and going from the earth. Now that's not occurring anymore and you may need some humidification in the winter months to really keep your wood moisture content in, in the optimal range and really just keep your house as close to equilibrium as possible. In the southeast, it's almost on a case-by-case -case basis where if you're a homeowner, even though it may be 70, 80% outside humidity or you just had a fog roll in, yeah, where yeah. it's 100%, if you're keeping your thermostat in the high 70s, low 80s, your house is gonna be drier than someone keeping their thermostat in the low 60s or, or high 60s, low 70s, That's is right. that correct? That's right. But in Minnesota, it's a different situation because you guys just get dry outside. It's dry all And it starts everywhere. to dry those houses out no matter if you're running your heat or not. Yeah, I mean, if you're, right? if you're in the Midwest or the Northeast, that's where you're gonna see these conditions all the time. And really, moisture control is really the area that we, we hang our hats on because sometimes you need moisture added to the air, like we mentioned in the winter, and sometimes you need it removed in the summertime so you can really create that, that equilibrium point in your house. All right, so why would someone need a, de a, a humidifier? Uh, give us a, a scenario and what is the uh, the best-selling, or maybe you have more than one best-selling April air humidifiers for the homeowner? So our best-selling model is our Model 600. That's basically our bypass humidifier that's going to work for most applications. And why would someone need a humidifier? Well, as I think you might have mentioned before, you know, if you have instances of respiratory challenges, 
if you have dry skin, if nosebleed situation, no, nosebleed situations, it, and also in the winter time, it's a great environment when it dries out for bacteria and viruses and other uh, of our organic friends to propagate. So when you control the moisture, you create an environment that's not conducive for those items. It just makes an overall healthier space to live in. Our second most popular is our 700, and that's our fan-powered model as well. So if you need a little bit more power to to move that air and increase that moisture addition then you would go with our 700. And don't worry, if you are living in a house or you live in a space where maybe you don't have a forced air system, and like I live in a house that has boiler heat, we also have our 800, which is our steam humidifier, mm, okay. which actually uses an electrode to heat water and put steam either into ductwork or just right into the air to make the house balanced and moist. So if you're gonna install these in your DIYer, you need a bit of mechanical knowledge uh, HVAC knowledge in order to do that. Otherwise, I, I suggest you have an HVAC professional install these for you. Is that correct? Absolutely. You're going to be dealing with water lines and wiring. If you're not somebody that's comfortable, I'd recommend going to aprilair.com and looking at our dealer locator to find a qualified professional to help you out. Very good. So I'm Michael Church with Crawl Space Ninja here with Brian Canfield from April Air. I hope you make it a happy and blessed day. We'll see you later. Thank you.